now we go to the third architect. Uh, today, uh, someone a uh, little bit less known, perhaps um, a Frenchman. A Frenchman uh, who built some important buildings and some of them quite interesting. I should have double checked. I should have checked how to pronounce his name. I don't know if I can find uh, a way to find out. Should it be Paul Kemetov or Paul Shemetov? Uh, anyway, born on the same year like uh, Fumihi Komaki, 1928. So both of them, um, 93 years old today. But on Wikipedia, Strangely, uh, Paul uh, is uh, shown as being born on the, on the 12th of October, and then on the very same page of the British English Wikipedia, uh, it says born on uh, September 6th, and, and the site where I take these birthdays from uh, is shown also on September 6th. So I, I chose to talk about him today. Um, sometimes there are, uh, you know, uh, contradictory uh, uh, informations on, um, on data on, on the web. So he was born in Paris on September 6th. This I took from the very same Wikipedia, which says that he was born on October 12th. Can you believe it? Well, it's not a uh, crime and it's certainly not the biggest crime. As a student, he belonged to the Union of Communist Students. Interesting. He graduated from the National School of Fine Arts in 1959. Kemetov, I somehow feel tempted to read it like this, but maybe the French pronounce it uh, Chemetov. Uh, uh, taught at the Ecole de Pont, Pont uh, Paris Tech, Paris Tech until 1989, at which time he switched to the Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne, the famous uh, architecture school in, uh, in Lausanne. In 1961, he joined the AAU. I don't know what this is. He has designed several buildings with Borja Cuidobro, uh, uh, who was born in Chile, uh, but, and they did build some uh, interesting buildings together since 1983. He has received several awards and honors, including the Grand Prix National d'Architecture in 1980, officer of the Legion of Honor, officer of the Order des Arts, uh, or Order des Arts et des Lettres, and officer of the Order, Ordre National du Merit. Uh, his son is also an architect, but I didn't uh, include that part of the text. And here is the man, uh, architect et urbanist. In my opinion, any good architect is also an urbanist, and uh, hopefully even a good urbanist is also an architect, and usually they are. Uh, I mean, usually an urbanist is also trained as an architect. Now there is a, a sofa or a bed by Miss Van der Rohe. Anyway, um, so this is the man. Happy birthday to you, sir, 93 years old, just like Fumihiko Maki. Cité des Anciens, La Courneuve, 1963-1966. Uh, a nice uh, building, you know. Uh, I, I always like this mixture between uh, brick and concrete, you know, with a so-called brutalist touch, but uh, sensitively done and wood adds to the mixture in a warm way, I would say. Yes, it's, it's, it's a complex of, uh, of uh, apartments called the Cité des Anciens or the, you know. Anyway, uh, I think it's a, good, uh, it's a good building. And again, you bring together brick and wood and also with touches of concrete, uh, you have a chance that uh, you, 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 you design something or you create something which is not very boring. 
Now, I am not sure what this is. It is the back of the building, which is very different from the other side. And, uh, you know, almost puzzlingly so, but interesting also, and it shows skill. So very different from uh, from Mihikomaki, for, for example. So I guess the access to the apartments is made through this, um, you know, uh, corridor, which is expressed uh, towards the outside in this way. A nice idea, and I think it works. Well, seen from here, without knowing the other side of the building, you would say this could be, a, I don't know, a cultural building, an industrial building, a public building. Well, it's not. But this circulation is public because it uh, gives access to each individual unit, which also has a nice uh, triangular space in front of it, which I think is nice to have this intermediate space between the corridors so you don't enter the, the house abruptly from the corridor. You have this, uh, uh, yes, uh, intermediate space. Uh, Théâtre de plein air in Hamamet in 1964, 1964, I guess it was built in, in 1964, is an interesting, uh, again, this, this architect who is uh, less known in, uh, in some parts of the world, in France, I imagine he is, but uh, he's not uh, one of the uh, best known architects. And yet, I think his work is good. Um, so it's a theater in, in open air. Uh, maybe he also uh, handled here some restoration of an existing structure. It's possible, but it's done well. And, uh, you know, without being afraid to uh, unfinish or let, let matter uh, express itself without so-called finishes, you know, uh, you have the stone, you see how the stone is placed above another stone, and then you have concrete here for this tower, and all in all, it's some kind of a mixture between the old and the new, which works. It's basic, no? It's it's, uh, but I like its, you know, primitivism, if I am to call it so. And interestingly, you know, uh, technological devices uh, sit well in a in a in a context which is, uh, you know, rather so-called primitive, although it's done with concrete, but uh, exposed concrete. Now, Maison Chalie uh, in Clamart, 1967. Uh, I like the interior, you know, has something of uh, Maison Jaoul by Le Corbusier and also, uh, you know, some, some works that we have seen in India. It, 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 there is a French architecture built in the, when was this built? 1967, yes. In the 60s, very interesting architecture, which I think is very relevant for our time. It's modern, but it's not an uh, aggressive, uh, indolent modernity. It's a hybrid modernity. And uh, I think uh, there are architects in France and not just in France, in Germany and other European countries. I think that architecture from a little bit later than mid-century in the 60s, uh, in, uh, in Europe in particular, but in the States as well, and maybe some other parts of the world, but in Europe, I'm talking about Europe. That, that deserves some attention in my opinion. And look, it's, it's an architecture that is not alarmingly, uh, you know, rationalistic, but it has this, this, uh, this conjunction of various materials. The geometry is simple, it's humane, but also, you know, modern in a, in a soft and warm way. I mean, look at this stair, you know, it's, it's, it's basic, but it's solid, it's massive, you can trust this stair, it's not, uh, you know, playing games with your foot or with your stability. Paul Kemetov, Paul Shemetov, Maison La Bombe, 
La Bombe, 1967-2004. That's a long time, uh, almost 40 years. Uh, I guess he built in, in, you know, various phases. But there are interesting things here too, you know. Uh, look at this, you know. Uh, you have, uh, be, if you didn't have the sloping roof here, this could have been almost some kind of a Tadawando building. But then you have this, the other two buildings. So I like this complexity and contradiction, if you want, and also this hybridity. It's not an architecture that, uh, you know, uh, claims uh, purity, uh, you know, uh, especially false purity. And it's very romantic because, uh, you know, the stone and again, touches of brick, the arches, uh, I like it. I, I would gladly live in, in such a place. You know, you, you, you could feel that you belong to the 20th century or 21st, but also to the Middle Ages, maybe. Uh, so I guess it was an intervention in time, perhaps also on an existing structure. Um, Now, if you cover these uh, these uh, walls with with plaster, I think you would ruin the whole feeling of the house. You know, I, I like these so-called imperfections. You know, the workings of time, of the elements, of the passage of time, water, snow, whatever. You know, the rain, <clears throat> the stair. It's you belong to the to the uh, to to Kronos, the god of of the. Uh, uh, circular time, you know, not to Kronos, sorry, to Kairos. Uh, it's it's something about the 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 conjunction between various times on the spiral of time. Maison Steckerman, Avelin, uh, 1972, 2001. Now this one is different because here probably he didn't have to incorporate any existing older part. But it's still an interesting building, you know. I mean, really, it, it are the, the, is that famous house in Bordeaux by uh, Rem Kolhas better than this building? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, anyway, uh, even here, there is this duality between this uh, uh, part of the building and this one, and there is a tension between them. Uh, not an alarming tension, but they are different. They are different. And I like the, the structure, you know, these diagonals add, add something to the building. And they are purely functional, I mean, structural. Caisse primaire d'assurance maladie, Vigneux sur Seine, 1972. Uh, Again, the, this architecture from uh, Europe, from France, now we talk about France, but other countries, from the 60s and early, early 70s, because towards the end, already the vicious postmodernism was knocking at the door. But in the 60s and early 70s, it was an architecture that it was modern, it was not aggressively modern, uh, and um, very innovative, I would say. Of course, we cannot turn the clock back. We cannot go back to that time, but maybe we can find some inspiration there. Collège d'enseignement secondaire, Romainville, 1973, um, a college, but not just concrete, but also color and circles. And the interior is, uh, is alive, you know, it's kind of like in Hermann Herzberger that encourages encounters, you know, chance encounters or otherwise, but encounters. These interstitial spaces are important for communication. And uh, I think they should always be present, uh, not just in uh, large buildings, but also in smaller buildings, if possible. Not afraid of color, as you can see, 
even so-called unconventional color, patinoir, a nice uh, ring, uh, sent uh, well in 1975-1979. This also an interesting building. I mean, look at this, you know, it's it's uh, inviting and a little bit provocative and you don't quite know what is there. Uh, but um, I think I like this building, you know, it's, it's, it's open, you know, and it, it is fragile enough to be, uh, uh, you know, not to be morose. A good architect, in other words, Monsieur Paul Kemetov or Shemetov. Operation Arago, Saint-Ouen, 1975, uh, housing. Housing with a clear social agenda and with prefabrication. And uh, there is a vivacity here that uh, uh, I admire. You know, it's, it's not, uh, I mean, prefabrication perhaps should be uh, contemplated again. And maybe it's not a building for uh, the rich, but a building for, uh, you know, uh, lesser people, so to speak. Although the language is problematic because those who are underprivileged are not at all lesser people. Um, and you see from the plan that, you know, it is a hybrid of functions. And it is exactly this hybridity that I think is very relevant to our time and, uh, and uh, a quality of this, uh, of this project. Logement HLM, uh, Sol Les Chartreux, 1976, other housing. This one also interesting, you know. Uh, yes, you know, they were experimenting a lot at that time, you know, and uh, Really, I mean, you can take this complex of, uh, you know, apartments or houses and uh, go with them to Japan and they will see just well. In fact, next door to a building by Tadao Ando. Or Fumihikomaki, if you want. And again, we see the same interstitial space. Well, here we don't see too much color. We don't see people, but try to imagine people here, well, in the context of uh, non-pandemic present, a uh, bench, people talking, you know, neighbors, this interstitial space between uh, uh, several uh, housing units is very, very human and very beneficial. Operation Robespierre, Saint-Ouen, again, 1978, another housing complex. The French built a lot of these, you know, they, they did have a need for uh, such housing complexes, and they, they also uh, had an interest in social, uh, social architecture, as you can see here, and uh, it's fine. You know, uh, yes, maybe this building is, uh, I don't know, it was not finished or something, but uh, even here you have a transition, and I don't know if this was designed by him, I imagine it was, but next to it is this building, which is a uh, lower scale, and it has variety. Uh, it's a dynamic, you know, architectural uh, context created perhaps not with the great ambitions, uh, you know, architecturally or with a great uh, budget. Immeuble anti bruit. So this is a building against noise in Vienna. I imagine it's Vienna, Austria, 1977-1979. Strangely, I thought I know Vienna well enough, but I never knew that uh, Paul Kemetov or Shemetov built there. Uh, it, is in, it is indeed anti bruit I mean, you know, turning the back completely with the exception of these little windows there, there are probably bathrooms there or something, you know, otherwise it's a very, very uh, misanthropic world. I mean, misanthropic, uh, misanthropic towards the noise. Uh, 
if I can say so. Otherwise, the building is uh, interesting, but yes, uh, in a very uh, difficult, uh, uh, you know, plot of land. I mean, it's not just uh, the railway, but also the highway. So the, the island of housing is uh, squeezed between two great sources of noise, a difficult indeed uh, uh, context. But uh, these, uh, these uh, units, they open towards this uh, courtyard uh, where there is even a tree and, uh, you know, an, uh, kind of amphitheater, uh, you know, configuration and uh, the fountain there, maybe an old fountain. Anyway, Equipment, Equipment Public de Hall, uh, Paris, 1979-1985. Now, even here we see skill you know, uh, sculptural skill, handling the architectural elements in a, in a, in a vivacious way. Again, a mixture of functions. We had a swimming pool there, here, there. we have uh, an amphitheater, I mean a theater, uh, we have a, a street, an inner street with probably shops and, uh, you know, uh, moderately dramatic uh, roofing system. Operation Pasteur, interesting the names of all these, um, of all these buildings. He built a lot, they built a lot. This also is interesting, I really like it. I really think we need such housing complexes, you know, experimental, uh, you know, uh, prefabricated, uh, uh, you know, expressing uh, social concerns. Here again, the access into the apartments is from an exterior um, corridor. Uh, and uh, where encounters between neighbors happen, uh, if indeed uh, the, the, the pandemic uh, goes away. I like the, the built work more than the drawing, but even the drawing shows multiplicity in unity. But I like, uh, I like uh, yeah, the, the way the building looks like, uh, you know, in real life, so to speak, built. Atelier, Paris, 19, I think it's their own atelier. I mean, his and his partner, meaning their studio from 1986, 1995. They took them a while to build it, uh, but it's not bad, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's cubical, but you don't perceive it as a cube because of the materials they employed. Not bad. Still drafting boards, of course, these pictures were taken before uh, the arrival of its majesty, the computer. I look at the structure of the, of the floors, uh, is, uh, of, the, of the ceiling. It's good. Yes, there is glass, but uh, a lot of glass, but somehow the building uh, emanates an, an aesthetics that is not, uh, you know, annoyingly uh, a glass aesthetics. Maison SZ in uh, this place, which I uh, hesitate to pronounce. Let's, let me see if I can try. Sauces Mar on Co, 1997, a very different kind of building. I am as surprised as you probably are after the building we saw, but here, just like in that uh, building that I comment on negatively by Peter Zumtor, it was an existing building and then they added another building which, with which they didn't try to compete. Uh, I mean, to situate themselves, uh, you know, antagonistically vis-a-vis uh, -vis this building. So this is, uh, you know, an, an attempt to uh, extend the existing building to a structure that was mimicking somehow the existing and yet different, 
different materials, the windows, you know, they are not very different from what we see here, maybe a little bit larger. Uh, I almost feel tempted to say that what they did here is better than what Peter Zumthor did in that uh, house in the Switzerland, which bothers me a lot with its uh, shelves for snow, as I call them, which is a uh, manner is totally uh, unasked for uh, or useless. Here, you know, Kemetov and his partner or Shemetov, he, they don't play games as Peter Zumthor did. And uh, they did a good job, I think. These two units together form a, you know, a big building with two sides, you know, uh, um, alas, two souls are dwelling in my heart. Now, this is uh, uh, the, the headquarters of, uh, of uh, the Communist Party in Paris. We learned that he was uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, associated with communism, and he probably remained. And this building was built by Oscar Niemeyer, who himself apparently was a communist, a uh, well-to-do communist in, uh, in, uh, in Brazil. This is the building by Oscar Niemeyer. I don't know exactly what uh, Paul did here, but there are interesting things happening here, no doubt. But I don't know, do they belong to Niemeyer, as they probably do? Or he was just the architect uh, on site in Paris working for and with uh, Oscar Niemeyer. But it's an interesting building, nevertheless, built by an interesting architect, Oscar Niemeyer and uh, Paul Kemetov. He contributed to the coming into being of this building. A touch of, uh, you know, extraterrestrial architecture here of an uh, unidentified uh, fly, un, un, unidentified flying objects. It's the, um, the, you know, the gathering room, the auditorium, the conference room uh, within, inside the building by, uh, by Niemeyer. And it has an interesting uh, skin, so to speak, the way it is treated, the, um, you know, the, the surface of the, uh, of the carcass of this large room. Not bad. Oscar Niemeyer and Paul Kemato. Uh, building in New Delhi, 1985. This one also, I think, uh, adapted to the local culture and yet uh, expressing uh, an accommodating modernity, as I would put it. With a touch of rationalism here, it's true. New Delhi. Governmental building. Now, Musée National d'Histoire Naturelle. Uh, I don't know why it's written there. Anyway, uh, it's both in French and not French. Musée National is Musée. Anyway, Paris. It saddens me a little bit, uh, the presence of these uh, stuffed animals inside the human structure. That's why I think we need, I think we need badly taming, taming the human, taming man, because we went too far, you know, controlling everything, plant and animal alike, putting everything into a, into a you know, cons uh, you know uh, in essence, a concentration camp. You know, for the dead or for the living, you know, if it is a zoo. We, we have to control everything, of course. The humans have to control everything. Now, it's true, I wouldn't like to meet uh, these rhinoceros or, you know, these animals on the street. It's true. But let them be free in nature and let, 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 let's not stuff them, please. You know, it's something horrid about stuffing animals. Birds also. Is this this assault on life that the human beings do that that bother me a lot? Hotel Industriel, 
uh, Pantan. I really think their architecture is not bad at all. Maybe with some predictable parts like here, but uh, for an industrial building, it's not bad at all. It reminds me a little bit of that Nemosis uh, complex of apartments by uh, apartment buildings by two two apartment buildings buildings by Jean Nouvel. Minister de Finos, <clears throat> this is in uh, uh, in Bercy in Paris, and it's uh, it's a very large building. Uh, you can imagine, you know, the Ministry of Finances. So we are dealing here with with those who handle the, the money in the capital of France. It's not a little matter, matter. And he worked with this man. This was his partner for many years, and most buildings that we saw were done together with him. This architect born in uh, in Chile. And this is the building. It's it's a massive. It's a, you know it, it's 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 an interesting building because it is built perpendicularly on 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 the river Seine, and it is monumental. It's large. I'm glad to see that a governmental building uh, assumed uh, you know a courageous architectural. Uh, statement. So this is uh, in, in the Bercy region of, of, of Paris. This is the building. I don't know about everything else here, but this is the building. This is a sports arena. I don't know who built it, uh, uh, but this is the building by the architect we are paying homage to today. I guess it's more than just this uh, building. Uh, it's also this and perhaps also this. Anyway, quite a large uh, complex of buildings in Paris or Paris. I really have to learn how to pronounce correctly his name. Kemetov, Shemetov. Anyway, La Seine, the Great River with its bridges, and then uh, Ministry of Finances by the architect who is 93 years old today. What an age. Of course, they still have to live a little bit longer, both him and Fumihiko Maki, to reach the, the, the age until the uh, which uh, Oscar Niemeyer lived. I think well, he died at 101 or 102. An architect dans le siècle, Paul Shemetov. Let me see, it should be something like Shem. Shemetov. I, I don't know why I feel like reading him in my own language, Shemetov. Anyway, here he is, engagé, ancien communiste. Engagé, ancien communiste. On lui doit notamment le ministère de l'économie et des finances, the work we just saw. This, was, uh, this picture was taken last year when he was 92 years old. Plaid pour une éthique de la construction. He uh, advocates an ethics, the ethics of construction. But I like this, engagé, ancien communiste. This is also a good building. Well, again, I don't know who designed it. I don't think it was by, by them, no. So next time you will be in Paris, please don't forget to take a look at this Ministry of Finances by 
And now Kazem, Masena, Paris, 2004-2010. Uh, I think it's another apartment building and uh, almost a commentary on l'unité d'habitation by Le Corbusier, and yet very different from l'unité d'habitation. Interesting work. And they probably did also this kindergarten, or maybe these are also uh, housing uh, units. I don't know, but all in all, I think it's a good architecture. Mediatek Lapostrof in Chartres, Chartres, not bad, near the cathedral, 2004-2007. We can see the, the incredible uh, uh, building uh, of the Middle Ages with its two towers, one dedicated to the moon, one dedicated to the sun, but it might be the other way around. This is the old tower. I think this is the moon, the moon tower, and this is the sun tower built a little bit later. This is the Western facade of the beautiful Chartres Cathedral, or some, the most beautiful cathedral ever built until now, for some. Perhaps this is a small building, La Mediatek in Chartres, where you can see the cathedral sitting there at the table. Uh, if, you, if you are interested to, to take a look through the window. And uh, again, a hybrid uh, function, you know, uh, uh, Mediatek with various things. But, but there are interesting things happening here. So, you know, uh, these architects uh, are well capable to offer surprises which you wouldn't expect looking at the building. Of course, they only build this, but looking at this, you wouldn't expect to, to view something like this. Maybe not even, well, like this, I guess too. This is probably in the older building. Anyway. And Chartres. Mazé, uh, La Bombe, uh, little house. Again, I like very much the way they combine a steel structure with stone, with a, some kind of a mixture between, uh, you know, technology and, uh, and the rustic uh, remnants of uh, previous buildings or existing buildings. They complement each other, and I think this is a good thing. And I like stone. We don't use stone enough, but um, I think you can trust stone. It's difficult not to, unless, of course, one uh, big rock falls on your feet, then it's a different story. Uh, Le Cursive, uh, the Pantin, uh, a large apartment building, a uh, newer work somehow, you know, uh, five years ago it was finalized the project. Built. Is this inferior to the housing uh, uh, blocks of flats built by Aldo Rossi in, in Berlin? I don't think so. Uh, but he is less known than Aldo Rossi. Residence Senior in Amiens, where there is another incredible cathedral, also just like Chartres, with a beautiful labyrinth on its floor at the entrance. I think this was a project, or was it built uh, rendering? Anyway, I think uh, they were quite good and they are good at, at handling, uh, um, you know, uh, housing uh, uh, requirements in a, in a, you know, uh, playful uh, and, uh, and yet uh, sober way. La Fabrique Reinventée Re Reinvent Paris to Reinvent Paris 2015. Even this building, you know, it's, I don't think it was built. But uh, I hope it was, because it is an apartment building that is interesting. And um, what else can I say? Paul Kemetov or Shemetov, Logement Saint Roche, again, uh, housing, uh, uh, housing units, blocks of flats with a, with a ludic uh, tram, tram car. Uh, they didn't design the tram car, and that's it. So happy birthday to him, and happy birthday to Sebastiano Serlio, and happy birthday to Fumihiko Maki.